Hello, my name is Naika, and I will be your host in today's episode, The Power of Collectivity. So far, we have covered some of the key aspects of the teachings of Master Ombram Mikhail Ivanhoff. We cannot separate his teaching from the methods and the practices that he proposes, and the power that these methods bring when practiced in a collectivity. So, in today's episode, Carmen will cover some of these methods which can be practiced in solitude or in the collectivity. She will also talk about the influence of Aquarius over the planet and the new current that it brings. You may wonder, what are the advantages of working within a collectivity? You will learn today about the synergy a collectivity creates and the many benefits and power that it has on oneself and on humanity. Finally, Carmen will take you to some of these brotherhood and sisterhood centers of light throughout the entire world, each unique in their expression and their embodiment of the master's teachings. Over to you, Carmen. Thank you, Naika, and welcome to this special episode where we will travel to 19 of the fraternal centers around the globe. In our first episode, we define what was the science of the initiates. As Omra Mikhail Ivanov likes to call it, initiatic science. We said it was a body of knowledge acquired by initiates and masters that was revealed to them by the invisible world. What is this invisible world? It is a hierarchy of beings composed of saints, prophets, angels, archangels, who all work together to help the evolution of humanity and who have all one goal in common, bring unity in the universe and unity with God. They all work together like in a beehive in order to bring their work about. It has been mentioned by Alice Bailey, Blavatsky, and Edgar Cayce. It is called the Great White Brotherhood. Edgar Cayce, the sleeping prophet from the United States, who had only a grade five, but was able to read in the Akashic record, said in the 30s and 40s, the beings of the White Brotherhood exist to promulgate the Christ spirit on earth. The Christ spirit is the spirit of truth and of life. This was taken from the reading 440-11. These souls, he said, has incarnated as a group in Atlantis, in Egypt, as the Essenes. And Omra Mikhail Ivanov mentions the Bogomil, who escaped uh, Bulgaria as they were persecuted and they went to France and to Italy. They became the Cathars and the Albigensians. Now I believe myself that they are spread throughout the world to bring about the kingdom of God to the, or what we call the golden age. Aquarius is coming. It's bringing new currents. And these currents are community, collectivity, fraternity, and universality. If we don't work on integrating our soul and spirit as becoming whole beings, we risk destroying ourselves. So come with me and discover the methods and the practices in those fraternal centers. Let us begin our virtual visit starting with Blagoslovenie. This is the largest center of the Universal White Brotherhood in North America. It was found in the 1980s and the master visited it many times. He called it Blagosovinie for all blessings. The sunrise is a primary activity where we connect with our higher self 
and it is followed by a series of exercises called a gymnastic where we integrate a formula, a feeling, and the movements together. It becomes very powerful and it's an act of white magic. After the gymnastics, we have a breakfast buffet style where brothers and sisters get to share together and exchange. Later on comes the Panorhythmy, a beautiful sacred dance composed by Master Peter Deneuve. It's movements that represents the blossoming of Mother Nature and the blossoming of our soul. There is a library where brothers and sisters can go and read in quiet times and meditate. Uh, singing has a large importance in the gatherings. Uh, here brothers are singing a song. Uh, singing is a way to connect with our soul. Agriculture is also very developed in all the fraternal centers and of course to be able to uh, reap such large abundance we need a lot of hands and brothers and sisters are always welcome to come and lend their hand so that there can be beautiful fruit uh, to collect, fruits and vegetables. Also, there are special weekends like the weekend of the St. John where there is uh, weekend activities including a picnic. It's uh, concentrated around the fire, a sacred ceremony where we gather and make a wish that we write down on a piece of paper and it is offered to Agni. Uh, so it can be taken on high. This is the angel of fire. You can see the beautiful picture here. And there is a congress in the summer for about three weeks where families are welcome camping in their trailers. There's also uh, dormitories, hotels, and comes the fall to collect the fruit of the land and also witness the beautiful colors. The scenery is absolutely magnificent in that area of um, the Eastern Canada, United States. In the winter time, there is uh, another Congress during the first 12 days of the year that is to prepare ourselves for the new year coming. Families are welcome. And now we will be flying to South America and we will go and discover the center of Zafiro. Uh, this is a center nestled in the mountains. It gathers people of the other uh, Spanish countries of South America, such as Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, Venezuela, Peru, and Mexico. They have online meetings and, of course, they also have uh, congresses uh, in the right season. They practice um, agricultural growing. It's all organic and there's always a work to do by the cascade and rejoice together around a good meal. And now we will go to discover in South America, in Brazil, Chave Essencial. It means the essential key. It's only a few years old. It has 40 hectares, uh, pardon me, 18 hectares of land. And it has nine little cottages at the back there. The main center has several rooms, such as a singing room, a conference room, uh, the dining room, and uh, the fireplace room. So it is a beautiful center. Each little cottage faces sunrise. Many of the brothers and sisters choose to go even higher up on the hill to do their spiritual work in the morning. Theater and the arts in general has a large place into the teaching. It allows to uh, express the manifestation of the lower self, the higher self. And breakfast is done in a freestyle buffet where children and adults are only too happy to gather and either practice the yoga of nutrition or share together. 
Panorhythmy is the dance we've mentioned before. It integrates all the movements of um, the essential truths, such as the eternal feminine, eternal masculine. We see that uh, people gather around the talk of the master. The grounds have been regenerated with the planting of 1,000 trees and 200 banana trees. And there is a lot of work being done there. The first tree that you see there in the foreground is, is called Quarius Meras, and the one in the background is the Panera. Of course, we have the beautiful bees that bring their sweetness of life. And um, brothers and sisters who come for weekend workshops are often around the prenatal work. Here, after working in the gardens in the morning, there's a, the morning swim, and uh, this is a singing, a rehearsal. Singing is important. It's the songs of Master Peter Donov. And Carla and Laura, being specialized in prenatal work, they attract obstetrician, midwives, medical doctors, young families. Uh, this is the room in the evening where they gather to talk about the teaching, read from the books. And now we will be returning to North America and discover the work done in the United States. The first gathering of the Fraternal Forum was in October 2019 in Virginia Beach. It was for the occasion of a psychic fair at the Edgar Casey Association for Research and Enlightenment. It was an opportunity to exhibit the books of Prasveta and the Aquarian team. There was also a talk around the importance of light and colors in our spiritual development. We did sunrise right on the beach across the Edgar Casey Center. A walk in nature was an opportunity to uh, read some prayers from the master and to sing along. On the Sunday, there was an open door to the public. We filled up the conference room. And in 2022 was the official first retreat at Mount Chasta with the 35th International Padme Consultative Assembly. There was sunrise either from the community center or Mount Chasta. The Padme is one of the arms of the Brotherhood where they uh, bring books to libraries in developing countries, help with translation. There was a panorhythmy on the Saturday with Mount Chasta in the background. Evenings were dedicated to true life stories where people who had a chance to meet Master Omra Mikhail Ivanov could share. On the Saturday afternoon, Laura Uplinger gave a talk to the public, Unity, a Spiritual Path for Our Time. There was the uh, Michael Mass celebration at the end of September at that occasion. And on the Sunday, we had an open door with a special concert and a talk on how to apply the teaching on everyday life. There were several excursions to waterfalls. There was an occasion to practice the singing. All in all, there were 60 brothers and sisters from five continents. Two thirds were Americans and others supporting our effort. In 2023, last summer, was the gathering around Blagoslovenie. And again, sunrise is an occasion where we concentrate and focus, meditate, contemplate the sun. Panorhythmy is either rehearsed during the week or practiced on the Sunday. And at lunch is an occasion to sing, listen to an audio or video talk of the master and practice yoga of nutrition. It was the occasion to launch omram.world website at one of the workshops during that time. And you can read the vision and the mission of the Fraternal Forum at omram.world. Now we're flying over the Pacific to go to Japan. The master visited Japan in 1970. He even spent eight days in a Zen temple near Tokyo, where he was very welcomed. 
And the Sisterhood of Japan is composed of Kyoko and sisters from various parts of Japan. They celebrated the Michael Mass there, and they rejoice into receiving their new books of the teaching. Uh, they had a gathering in 2023 because there's not an official center there. It's more a study group, and they gather whenever they can, mostly online or physically, when possible. They recorded several testimonies of brothers or sister, and you can read that at Kyoko Tanaka 6065. And now we're going down over to Australia. Again, there they don't have a, f a formal center, but they have a group, and they gather as mini congress where they do the practice of the sunrise, the gymnastic, and also the panorhythmy. These are all occasions when we get together to form a synergy by the energy that uplifts us and that strengthens our aura. There was an occasion here to even go singing in the rain on various excursions, being with nature. When they gather, they practice the yoga of nutrition, the singing. And um, this was in Perth uh, with Linda, another gathering there. Uh, people, brothers and sisters like getting together. Uh, Panorhythmy workshop took place at the Shanti Mission Yoga Retreat back in 2021. And this is a yoga place where they have all the books of the master and some of the practices are integrated into their school. They mostly meet online as Australia is a very vast country and brothers and sisters are spread throughout. Now we're going to fly over to New Zealand, go and discover another small group there. Uh, that is composed of Jonas on the left there with Carol and David. They meet online or they meet in person to study the teaching. Now let us fly to the African continent. We'll start with the Ivory Coast and their center called Vechna Prolet. Every time there is a retreat, it's also an occasion to buy the books that are missing or to offer some as gifts when we re return back home. Food is prepared by the effort of the collectivity, brothers and sisters helping wherever they can. It's an occasion to share the qualities and virtues we have. And when we practice the exercise, as you see here, there is a formula that accompanies each of the movements. So when we put our thinking with our feeling, with a formula, it becomes very powerful. Now we're going to the Republic of Congo, where it was the inauguration of the new hall. The center there is called the Rila Center. People came from many different local countries, uh, such as Gabon, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, uh, Gabon. There were many cities that participated within um, the Republic of Congo. There were also people from Ghana, from Togo, from South Africa. There, it was a, an even special guest from France came along. This is the inauguration of the new hall. And we see brothers and sisters getting ready for the gymnastics. And when they are practiced in this way, it's not just to draw blessings on ourselves, but on the entire brotherhood and on humanity. Same as when we dance panorhythmy. We don't dance panorhythmy just for ourselves, but we bring it to bring harmony in humanity, in all couples. It is a way to connect with something much vaster, with the universal white brotherhood on high. Now a choir of sisters and brothers had practice for the inauguration of the main hall, and you can see how beautiful their performances.
And now we're going to Mishnevo in Russia. It means Michael's home. There's the main center and then the residential home. And uh, Russia has many, many groups throughout the Russian land. And we see again a beautiful manifestation of sunrise. All these occasions, these methods and practices that we do together, whether we are in one center or another, we can always join because we've learned them from the smaller groups where we reside. And in this way, we can travel anywhere in the world, go to any of the retreats, and we feel as one big family together. There's always excursion out in nature where we integrate different parts of the teaching to vivify any actions we have. And the reason why there's so much of the arts in the teaching, whether it's the theater or singing or exhibition of painting, it's because it connects us with our soul. And when we connect with our soul, we can invite the inspiration of spirit to fill us with its gift. We see the fire of Michael Mass and sharing together in the spirit of joy um, around tea and cake. We will share later on with you how to get in touch with the closest group to you. This was an exhibition in Moscow. Now the brothers and sisters are in the winter time. They're saying farewell to us and they're sending their love from Russia. And we will now be traveling to Bulgaria, starting our tour in Varna by the Black Sea. This is the Grand Hotel London in Varna, where Brother Mikhail, at 17 years old, met Master Peter Denov, who resided at the top floor of the hotel. Uh, this is the Black Sea where they went for sunrise and the center of the White Brotherhood in Varna, where they meet for their gathering. The Ibensa Memorial Garden in Sofia, where brothers, sisters, and visitors pay their homage to Master Peter Denov. They meet in the garden there to play music or to talk about the teaching and sing along. This is the Seven Lakes of Rila in the mountains with the anchor, the symbol of the Brotherhood. It's a symbol of navigators who travel on the ocean of life and with the rope, the hope, they connect to the divine world. They meet in the mountains from the last week of July to the 19th of August. It's quite a hike to get up there. Uh, the tents are spread out throughout the mountains and this is the international kitchen for those who come from afar. Sunrise is quite a marvel there. You see a special phenomena that took place on that day of the recording. Uh, brothers and sisters attend sunrise every morning and then span with me every day around one of the lakes of the uh, Rila mountain. Brothers and sisters bring their instruments and they play music in the evening. And this is the 19th of August where they have the celebration of the sun. Five rings of dancers with the orchestra in the center. Throughout Bulgaria, these are all the centers of the wider brotherhood and the music you hear in the background was the Vidilina Choir directed for this song by Jordan Kashmalov in 2019. The choir was composed of brothers and sisters from 12 different countries. And now we will resume our traveling by going to Greece. Uh, where the master visited on several occasions. In 1964, he went to Delphi. This is where the inscription on top of the temple reads, Know thyself, which means know your higher self and know your lower self, your divine nature and your human nature. He traveled through some of the islands and he went back in 1971 again. 
um, when there's not a physical center, brothers and sisters meet into their private homes to uh, share together the practices of the teaching. In 1971, he went to Porto Heli. You can see the sunrise over the rooftop here. And uh, brothers and sisters love getting together because that way they uh, get to exchange, uplift to each other, and share uh, discoveries of the teaching. In 1971, again, the master traveled uh, to the different islands. He always remained very simple and accessible when he met with brothers and sisters. Um, when he went traveling, he went to Patmos. This is where St. John wrote the book of our revelation. He said there was a great feeling in the grotto there. And now we will be flying to the dove's nest in the new religion which is coming over closer and will one day embrace the whole world. Spiritual realities will be closer and more accessible and people will be able to live them and feel them and communicate and unite with them. Every day they will receive such extraordinary luminous nourishment that they will be obliged to transform themselves. For only if humans absorb the best possible nourishment on all levels can they really be transformed. This was from Towards a Solar Civilization a little book. There are several centers in the UK. The Dove's Nest is the main one. And there are groups in Oxford, Southport and Edinburgh. Now we come closer to the Dove's Nest which uh, has been there for many decades. And while the photos are unfolding, I would like to tell you a little bit more about Aquarius, because now humanity really stands at a crossroads, and it needs the most prepared and advanced to bridge the old Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age. We need to move from a fully materialistic society and integrate our spirituality. It's like moving from a geocentric point of view where we think the earth is at the center to a heliocentric point of view where we have to put spirit in the first place. And um, Aquarius is bringing new currents and the planets requires new methods, a new consciousness, a new behavior to create new conditions to bring balance and harmony on the planet. We mentioned before, Aquarius is an age of community, fraternity, spirituality, inviting us towards a solar civilization and eventually the golden age that it wants to bring on to Earth. And in the brotherhood centers, all the right conditions exist for this work. The philosophy, the living conditions, the environment, the ambiance, the methods are for everyday life and for the future. So we are taught how to practice these methods of the sunrise, breathing exercises, pranayama, after the sunrise, where we can integrate a higher vitality into our etheric body. We can also take this opportunity to work with colors. And then we have the gymnastic, as was demonstrated, panorhythmy, as we see here. Um, the yoga of nutrition is practiced when we eat together. Um, we have methods to nurture the high ideal. We'll talk about it a little bit later. And there are a lot of modern prayers where we feel like we're speaking from the, from the heart. And there's all kinds of inner work to do, such as grafting, transmuting, sublimating in, in a way of changing our lower vibration habits to higher ones. This was the music by a brother and a sister from the Dove's Nest. And now we will be leaving England and we will be traveling to the center of Clercolin in Belgium. There are two centers in Belgium. There's also Beaumont that we'll see a picture later on. So we were saying that any activity that we do, we are taught 
how to take it as an occasion to infuse the divine in everything we do, whether it's like washing windows or washing the floor or washing the dishes, we can see that as an opportunity to ask the angel of water to come and wash all our impurities. Purity has a great importance in the teaching. Purity on all levels, purity in what we think, in what we feel, in what we read, in what we drink, in what we eat. Um, it's part of integrating the purity of heaven down on earth. And as you see in the fraternal centers, um, it reflects the criteria that the master had given that what we buy or what we build, that it be practical, economical, aesthetic, and durable. So we try to integrate that into everything we do, in everything we buy, and it reflects the purity of the heavenly regions. And now we will quickly see the other center in Liège called uh, Bémont. And we soon will be traveling to uh, Switzerland. Welcome to Vidilinata. It is in the region of Vevey above Lake Le Mans. You see the little cottage of the master on the left there. We will see it again in another photo. It's a large center. It has been there for many decades. It's facing the Alps in Mont Blanc. And they have uh, retreats throughout the year. The master used to go there in February every year. And there were some wonderful talks and videos, uh, not videos, but talks taken from there. This is the uh, little cottage of the master where he could see the uh, mountains across from him. And now you may wonder, why is a collectivity so powerful? Well, because it brings a change in consciousness. You see the example when there's a disaster such as a tsunami or uh, earthquakes, it brings the best in people. The advantages of forming a collectivity because it's like a synergy that uplifts people's consciousness. It strengthens their aura and it helps all the people affected by this situation. It's also another example is like the Spanish inn, the buffet style where you get to taste several different foods. It's the same thing in the brotherhood. We each bring with us our qualities and virtues and talents and we get to share it with others. This is how we build up a stronger aura, more colorful aura through the sharing that we experience with the brothers and sisters. And now we'll be leaving the winter of Idilinata and we will be heading towards Spain where they have uh, several groups there and three main centers, Manantial, Aur, and the seven Aliguas. Um, we will carry on talking about how is a collectivity of the brotherhood or sisterhood created? Well, first of all, brotherhood has to be born in our soul. And this happens by reading the books. The master would say, read, read the books, and read them a third time. And that creates in us a desire, a desire to come with others of like-minded spirit so that we can sing, do the spiritual exercise together. In, in a fraternity, brothers and sisters try to vibrate in harmony with the cosmic collectivity and people gain tremendously, like they're being showered by the cosmic brotherhood. That way, our health, our mentality, psychically, physically, we improve. And of all the other things, little by little, we get uplifted. A fraternity is a collectivity that holds a greater luminous consciousness. Its members are united and work not only for themselves, but for the whole world. 
A brotherhood is an egregore, or if you want, a collective consciousness. It is formed by the thoughts, the ideals that the members share, but also comprises their emanations, their fluids, which reach out to the world to create a new mentality. And for the golden age to happen, awakened beings, intermediaries are needed. You know, when they have a seance, um, the medium requires to have the ectoplasm from the participants in order for the spirit to manifest. Well, it is the same. Now we need intermediaries because spirit cannot act directly on matter as the different regions are composed of different substances. And it is already decreed in the invisible world that the human values are going to change with the coming of the Aquarian Age. So physical people are needed through their hearts, their minds, their soul and spirit. So their thoughts and feelings of all enlightened beings form a powerful light, which is spreading and influencing the minds of men and women. And one day, the whole world will be touched and contaminated by this new light. This is why the quantity is needed now. A large number of voters for the golden age, people ready to change their, their perspective and to act in accordance with these new currents sent by heaven. And this is what we learn in the divine school of the brotherhood. To work on oneself, become a role model, and with the power of the collectivity, help all of humanity. So in our brotherhood sisterhood centers, we create centers of light, or like beacons, that are so necessary on the planet to set off the astral and mental pollution. Not only do we benefit individually by raising our own vibration, but we also uplift all of humanity. These centers of light pave the way for the future of humanity. What a delight it is to participate to such a glorious work. And brotherhood must exist in the world among human beings because it is already existing in nature and they must live according to the laws of nature. And as we mentioned before, since everything starts in the invisible, eventually it has to come down physically. So why not be part of it? It's the collectivity that counts at the moment. And now we will be traveling to Armonia in Italy, the main center there. And as the video unfolds with uh, continuing with the methods that we practice in the teaching, um, there is a daily meditation dated back to January 4th, 2017 that I would like to read for you. Centers of light must be established throughout the world in order to form a link between heaven and earth. These centers are living conduits through which divine blessings descend for all human beings. Happily, such centers already exist because without them, the earth would be already be prey to all the dark and destructive forces. Do you truly wish to help your family, your country, and the entire world? Everywhere you go, you should do everything possible to create these centers of light by means of which the earth enters into contact with heaven. To establish such centers, it is the most glorious work you can undertake, helping all human souls to receive spiritual nourishment Enjoy as a result of your efforts. You can subscribe to the daily meditation by going to prosveta-usa.com and you can also buy the little book called Daily Meditation. And now we are flying over to Portugal to discover two centers there. They have the center Primavera in the south and the center Crystal in the north. 
Here we see the Primavera Center when they were still doing the construction and now you see this beautiful center today. And now as uh, the video is unfolding with uh, more photos of the um, brothers and sisters and the different methods that are being applied, um, I'd like to cover something with you. That initiatic science, in fact, is not a new science or a new philosophy. It carries the same principles and laws, but the methods are now adapted to the present epoch. It is simply a new goal, a new trend, an ideal of collectivity and universality. Because now we need to realize that we're all brothers and sisters. All human beings are the same, uh, uh, have the same heavenly father and mother. And they must be united like the cells of a single organism, which all collaborate and work harmoniously together for the health and well-being of that organism. Master Peter Deneuve said to some disciples that Jesus brought the principle, that he was bringing the methods and Michael would be realizing them. And Steiner said that a Michaelic era would be coming. Well, at present, there are many fraternal centers around the globe, as you can see, and hundreds of groups and thousands of readers who study the teaching of Master Omra Mikhail Ivanov. And I think this is how we are realizing a Mikhailic era on the planet. How we know that the universal white brotherhood above directs the universe. But this little brotherhood here on earth is a mere reflection of the great brotherhood above. The fraternity at present is not a match for the universal white brotherhood on high, but it makes ourselves a temple to receive the beings of this order. Then our little brotherhood will become one day one with the August white brotherhood above. Omla Mikhail Ivanov had a very broad mind and said that all those who work for the light whatever their religious or spiritual affiliations, are members of the Universal White Brotherhood. So it's all those people working for the light who are members of the Universal White Brotherhood. What a very broad concept he had of brotherhood. And now we will be leaving uh, Portugal and we will be going to France, where we will discover two centers, Isgrev, which is the headquarters of the Universal White Brotherhood. And this is where all the uh, conference, the talks, audio, video, or even the first talks that were taken in shorthands are being stored. It is the closest center to Paris region. It is in the suburb of Paris. And they meet every week and they have retreats at different time of the year. Unless there are retreats at the main center in the south of France where we will go later on. So at the center at Isgrev they have the villa and they have uh, some residential areas. And they have gardens and fruit trees and they have a beautiful location for sunrise as well and they have different activities they have library where people can go and read into the archives of the teaching or uh, true life stories from brothers and sisters who met the master and now we are flying down to the french riviera at the bonfin near Fréjus. This plot of 40 hectares was given to the Brotherhood by Brother Jean in the 1950s. It was very rough, there was no water, no electricity. It is called the Domain of the Bonfin. It has now grown to this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful center. Um, this is the main hall here. 
and I will translate the words of the Master. Consecrate a few minutes to think how the whole world will one day form a big family in which all the members love, understand, and smile at each other. Yes, there are so many good things to think about for the happiness of mankind. May all the earth sing and dance. May all the earth go to see the sunrise in the morning, where all the earth offers an hymn of joy and gratitude to the Creator. So this is the main hall that we see from a distance here. And this is where all the practices and methods that we have seen in previous uh, fraternal centers have been learned from this main center here. I will read a little excerpt from A New Dawn. An epoch is coming where the universal white brotherhood above will manifest itself here below. The constellation of Aquarius is drawing nearer and it will oblige humankind to think in terms of universal dimension. All the tremendous scientific discoveries of recent years have been inspired by Aquarius, and there are more to come. But after these, people will enter the era of true discoveries, inner discoveries, that a human being is immortal, that love is all-powerful, that light is the only treasure worth winning, and the, necessary, the necessity to use willpower to develop the inner powers rather than relying on external means, instruments, and machines. So it is the idea of fraternity, of unity, that can save the world. Otherwise, we remain separated, divided, cancerous, fighting against each other, and possibly annihilating humanity. We're all built on the same structure, with a heart, a mind, and a willpower, plus our subtle bodies. We all share the same needs to breathe, to eat, to sleep, to express our creativity, and be inspired to greater heights. So it is through the methods brought by Omra Mikhail Ivanov that we are invited to work on ourselves through our thoughts, our feelings, <clears throat> and our behavior. We are reminded of the importance of the high ideal. When we decide to work for the high ideal, to concentrate our energies, forces to participate to the work of the great universal white brotherhood, we come under a new order. We enter another dimension and join a group of highly evolved intelligence, advanced creatures who see our decision and come to inspire us and help us we can then experience a joy, a fulfillment that nobody or physical object can bring us. The sole goal of the Universal White Brotherhood is our advancement, for us to be united and to form one big family. So I will share with you here the formula of the high ideal that Master Peter Deneuve gave. To have a heart as pure as crystal, a mind as luminous as the sun, a soul as vast as the universe, and a spirit as powerful as God, and one with God. In the past, hermits and um, saints and mystics retrieved to the caves in order to salvage their soul and unite with God, and that represented the triangle pointing up. Now we have to reverse that triangle, and we have to realize heaven on earth, and we have to do that right where we are in the midst of our daily activities by thinking differently, feeling differently, and behaving differently. This is how we allow the invisible beings of that universal white brotherhood on high to come through us and our aura that has all these qualities and virtues uh, in potential is being expressed and shared with others around us and thus we influence them. 
Here we see the Prosveta booth at the Bonfin where the books are sold in all languages with uh, CD talks of the master and every summer there are uh, choir performance, musician performance, uh, artistic exhibition. It's uh, absolutely a beautiful place. Once again you feel an illumination, an enlightenment. But once again, it does not last for a long time. But don't get discouraged. One day, at last, after all the highs and lows, the light will no longer leave you. You will have changed banks, and you will be saved for good. These were the words of the Master. To find the closest Universal White Brotherhood Center near you in the USA, go to omram.world in England, omram-uwb.uk. And for the other countries, go to fbu.org, where you will find the countries and in many languages. So you see, these are uh, some of the centers that we visited around the globe, but there are many study groups in many countries, and of course there's thousands and thousands of readers throughout the world. The books are translated in some 45 languages, so we encourage you to read the books and participate to the golden age coming on earth. I hope you have enjoyed this fast traveling around the globe. Let me tell you the books that I've used to compose my text today. A New Earth, Volume 13, Know Thyself, Volume 17 and 18, Life and Work in Initiatic School, Volume 30, A New Dawn of Society and Politics in the Light of Initiatic Science, Volume 25 and 26. This is the one that talks about Aquarius. And the little pocket book called A Philosophy of Universality. So thank you for being with us. Back to you, Naika. What a gift it was to learn more about the Universal White Brotherhood and several elements of the teachings to nurture our soul and spirit with modern methods and practices. Thanks to these, a new consciousness and a new behavior is emerging on the planet, bringing a better balance and harmony. Plus, the advantages and power of forming a collectivity because it is a synergy that uplifts people's consciousness, strengthens the aura, and helps the entire planet. We have seen how the influence of Aquarius is bringing an age of community and fraternity towards a solar civilization and eventually a golden age. And thank you, Carmen, for this first class free trip around the globe. It was great to see all these brotherhood and sisterhood centers of light that are dedicated to bringing heaven on earth. And finally, there is one more episode in this series. In episode six, Anatole will interview a range of people from Africa, Asia, Europe, North and South America, and Oceania, and how they experience the teachings in their everyday life. The testimonials will particularly emphasize the benefits of visiting spiritual centers. And yes, we will not end there. In future episodes, we will cover various topics, including love and sexuality, reincarnation, the four sacred sciences, sacred geometry, expressing co-creation through the arts, and much, much more. It was such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you, and we will see you in two weeks.